Hello to, and welcome to the yearly Ruby buff. Um, let's make a quick introduction who's here. Um, can you pass around the microphone and start somewhere? Start. Sorry. Lucas, uh, inactive Ruby team member. <laughs> Conrad, I'm here to observe and maybe get involved. Hi. Uh, I'm Kanashil. I'm recently become an active member in Ruby team. Uh, I'm Lucas as well. I've recently become a member of the Ruby team too. I'm Matthias. Um, I'm not a member of the Ruby team. <laughs> You're an honorary member of the Ruby team. I'm just looking at uh, auto package test failures. Um, for Ruby packages in Ubuntu. <laughs> My name is Alan. I'm just here to observe and maybe get involved. Okay. Hi, I'm Christian, and I happen to be on the team, <laughs> as well as... Yeah. I'm Antonio, and I'm, we, we and Christian, we maintain the Ruby interpreter, and then we are also members of, of the Ruby team, which maintains uh, libraries and applications. Great. Um, so there is a list of things that we possibly could talk about on Gobi. I hope you have seen the Gobi invitation. Um, we nowadays have a list of applications and important packages that maybe people want to know what we're doing for in Stretch. Um, yeah, so from the list um, that, yeah, I personally got the question which version of Rails we are going to ship, which I have no idea. Uh, and then I imagine people want to know what's the status of GitLab and maybe Redmine and possibly Diaspora and Open Build Service, which I did not know we ship, but apparently we do. Um, well, doesn't anybody know? So Rails, uh, Rails 5 was just released a few days ago, but um, if we upgrade, we immediately break GitLab, Diaspora, Redmine, and OBS. So we'll probably be shipping Rails 4.2, unless some miracle happens, and all those guys start using Rails 5. And I don't think it's a good idea to have two versions in the archive at the same time. Uh, so it's probably going to be raise 4.2. Okay. Um, GitLab is is more or less working on stable and uh, Bravini, which is the main person driving the efforts dealing with lots of uh, on, dependency breakage oh. and oh. Where they come? every new okay. every new GitLab version has new dependencies and changes the versions it wants and it's very complicated. So we are trying to deal with that. Uh, we've done before with Redmine. So Redmine, um, up until now, we have <coughs> the latest re upstream release, which is, is in a good state as far as I know. Uh, we have some issues on stable. I already did uh, three stable updates and maybe we need more because uh, the Jesse freeze happened exactly when before Redmine had Rails 4 support upstream so I had to package a non-released snapshot it was that or not having Redmine on Jesse 
So there are a few issues, and if people want to help with Red Mind, I'm interested in mentoring and helping anyone interested. So it's basically figure out why uh, the problems happen and try to backport a patch from App3. Because obviously we don't we don't want to add a whole new upstream release to Jesse. I have no idea about diaspora. Anyone? I guess it's more or less in the same state as GitLab, as far as I know. It seems the diaspora upstream is a little less cooperative with us. The GitLab people seem to care enough about Debian to uh, be helpful and uh, it seems that the diaspora upstream is actually hostile to Debian. But uh, Pravin still So we are going to keep this for uh, anyway? As long as Pravin is willing to maintain it, I don't okay. I don't see why not. Good. Um, some people on IRC say the video stream is done. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And OBS, um, Andrew Lee is working on it. It will probably ship in stretch. So there's going to be the fourth big Rails application we have. Okay. Um. So, Bala Sankar sorry, um, mentioned that they are working on GitLab six, um, Diaspora 6. So, maybe we're going to get that. Um, and Andrew is not here, right? Uh, he's he is in that conf, but probably not, uh, not here. In okay. Oh, well. Um, well, thank you for the update. Um, so, Given recent cleanup efforts, um, we came to an interesting question that is, what should the team actually try to package? Um, because we now maintain, uh, last year we maintained over 800 packages. Uh, many of them are leaf packages that are actually library packages. Um, and it's not clear if we should keep those. Um, so the general question is, are we focusing on packaging applications and then actively remove all leaf packages that are not applications? Or are we there to ship everything under the sun and include and keep all those libraries or not? Um, so I'd like to have some discussion, I guess, on that. And apparently we now ship over 1,000 packages. <laughs> Thanks, Cedric, who's I, on IC. I think, <laughs> so my main motivation is having applications, so I don't package I don't package random libraries. But um, if people are willing to do that because they're using for local scripts or for uh, stuff they have that's not packaged but wants to use uh, packaged libraries, then I don't see a problem with that as long as the libraries are maintained and not broken. Um, if it's broken, nobody cares, and we should probably remove. But as long as they don't cause problems for us, for instance, when uh, upgrading to new versions of the interpreter or being completely broken, otherwise, I, I, I don't see a problem with the packages staying there. If they start to be problems, I, I'm all for removing them. Mm. Well, we certainly don't have uh, the. As Citrix says, we don't have the manpower to package everything. And um, 
if you look at the list of out-of-date upstream versions, then that's also a very large number by now. Um, yeah, I'm not sure we want to ship old libraries. Possibly that will cause security issues, I don't know. Um, microphone? That's the microphone? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I think that in many cases, uh, a null li uh, library is more useful than no package at all. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a, I don't use any of those applications, but uh, I'm, I use quite a lot of uh, lib libraries that are pack packaged in Debian. Yeah. Um, so I think somebody suggested the other day that we have like a wiki page listing important or core libraries that are not dependencies of other packages that we want to keep, maybe. Um, I mean, if if I mean if they are broken, uh, it's okay to remove them, but I don't mm. see the point in removing uh, stuff yeah. that is not broken. Okay. I mean, we have users, they report bugs about stuff that is broken, or at least they are supposed to. If there's no bug, we can assume that it works for everybody. Or that nobody uses it. Or that nobody uses it. But, but as long as it's not causing problems, I don't see why they shouldn't be there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so another cleanup effort. Um, Ruby BDB is now not broken, but it's still very old and it used to break regularly. Um, there is no reverse dependency, and I mailed a few days ago. I, I will uh, file for removal for this, um, except anybody says something. Yeah, I guess on specific case, if you have a good reason to remove, okay. Yeah. Like, I just don't think we should remove just because it doesn't have reverse dependency. What is the recommended library to replace Ruby BDB? <laughs> good question. Um, <coughs> I don't know. The problem with that is upstream is gone. Yeah, I know, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I guess the answer is not use BDB. Okay, but I mean, BDB is like is a wrapper for database access. Uh, no, it's Berkeley DB. It's Berkeley DB. All yeah. oh, right. Oh. Hmm. I think licensing <coughs> for BDB has changed a few years ah. ago, also. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. And then I made some lists. Um, packages that did not see uploads in the last two years. So I think 256, um, and then yeah, packages that have no reverse dependencies. I did not check for reverse build dependencies, indeed. Um, but it's uh, quite a list. Does that work? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, so how many? 258, 256. Yeah, so about one quarter of our packages. Um, yeah. And yeah. Yes. Some of these are obviously broken, um, even though there are no bugs filed, but they don't actually work. So I, I manually looked at the first few, and um, well, they don't actually work. Yeah. If you start them, or if you just load the library, it crashes. Okay. Um, so none yeah. of them have reverse dependency. Um, I did not check that. Okay. So you'd need to manually join both lists. Um, well, there are some libraries in the list that I use and that work fine. So okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess the newer ones um, work. Even not the newer ones, but. Uh, What's your, that's over the last year, right? Not the last two years, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are packages here that is broken since the Ruby Sprint. Oh. You need to turn it on. Uh, yeah, okay. It's just there is a basically a package here that is broken since the Ruby Sprint that that happened in March. That Ruby Rails Auto Link. So, yeah, there's there's definitely some packages here that are broken quite mm -hmm. some time. Mm -hmm. But you said that there are some that uh, just crash if you load the library. Yeah. That's something that we could test automatically. We are not yeah, we could. Um, yeah. I think yeah. I think we actually well we. We run auto package tests on, or CI, Deb CI runs auto package tests for this, but yeah, then nobody files an RC bug for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so they are failing at uh, on Deb CI. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Citric reports that he thinks most of these packages are probably build dependencies of GitLab or Diaspora. Um, so we need to. Most of them? Many. 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 Um, yeah, maybe we need. Or I should make a new list excluding build dependencies. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, like packages yeah. that haven't been touched in three or four or more years have. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just don't put. If, if you are going to review them and try to remove them, just don't put. Just put the bar quite far in the future. I mean, probably all those that uh, that are from uh, 2014 and up. Don't need to be reviewed. Mm. Uh, start with the really old ones. Yeah. 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 I guess the first thing is report an RC bug. And yeah. Well, once they are gone from <laughs> testing, we can. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is a call for help on testing packages, really, and maybe looking at old packages. Maybe we just need to start with um, well, uh, CI failures. Yeah. Uh, definitely things that should be removed. But uh, if packages pass, pass CI, uh, CI and uh, there are no known bugs, mm -hmm. and yeah. can I add an action for you to send an email to the list with yeah. this information yeah. in asking for help? Okay, I will do that. Uh, does UTD's maintainer dashboard list CI test failures? Yes, yeah. It okay, does. cool. Good. Yeah, so the leaf package list is as, yeah, probably not as relevant. Um, then an open point here is, do we have any to-dos for stretch that are important? I think the um, interpreter is quite okay, except that it does not build, repro you, repro you, it does not repro build. Um, <coughs> And I don't really know why, but diffoscope times out. Uh, so there are probably too many um, diffs. Yeah. Um. There's also the issue with um, OpenSSL 1.1. Right. So that's fixed upstream. Um, I think the, the plans to have OpenSSL 1.1 in Jesse. Uh, in stretch, stretch, yes. In stretch. So we have to fix that. That's fixed up stream trunk. But uh, the, there's an, an open bug about that, and uh, we just don't have the perfect solution yet. So maybe it's backporting the changes in upstream trunk. Maybe it's. So it seems that Ruby 2.4 will remove the open SSL extension from the interpreter package. So do we will pull the <laughs> external version, but I don't think that's ready right now. Okay. So the, the external package didn't have any release until this point. And I, I opened an, an, an issue there to, to ask them to clarify what the status is and, and how they plan to go forward with that. Okay. And upstream already knows about that. The main maintainer replied that he will be working on like documenting how is security support going to be. But even then, maybe that's not something we want to do for Ruby 2.3. Especially because upstream didn't do it, so maybe we want to backport OpenSSL 1.1 patches for 2.3 and then 
follow up three for two point four and drop the embedded copy of open of the open SSL library. Okay. Uh, Citrix suggests an RC that we should also update packages, obviously, uh, to the last up upstream version where possible. Yeah. Um, I think that neatly leads to the next point, which I called RDAP check here. Um, right now it's, well, hard to know if updating a library breaks one of the major applications that we ship. Um, and yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I don't know what other people are doing. I mostly... Can, um, assuming people are using the helper scripts in the repository, mm -hmm. we could um, check if the package being built is a dependency or one of the list of applications we care about and then test them mm -hmm. before going to the upload part. Okay, um, from what I understand, the um, at least GitLab has, a ver has very tight dependencies in the gem file. Uh, is that it true? It does. I already told Praveen that he needs to change that, otherwise it's going to be impossible to maintain. Okay. Um, so... I mean, yeah, there's all that, that conversation about semantic version and everything, but I think Mm -hmm. We can't assume upstream is insane every, every, every time. I mean, some upstreams are insane, but most of them are not. Okay, um, do you want an action item for doing the changes to the build script to...? Yes. Um, so, yeah, that was, uh, if people are actually using the scripts in, in our repository, I'm not sure everybody is, um, but they are nice. Um, build and upload is an awesome script. If you don't use it, well, you should, really. Um, it does almost everything for you. Um, yeah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we should package those scripts. I mean, they're useful not only for the, the Ruby team. Uh, I mean, Tercero was really just talking that he used the, that script for almost all package that he does. Yeah. And, I mean, I would like to use them not only on the Ruby mm -hmm. team as well, so I think it's going to be useful for everyone if they are packaging. Yeah, the okay, so... Um, right, uh, there's a language packaging skills exchange both scheduled for first day. Um, quarter past five, where um, well, the plan was that the at least the Perl and the Ruby teams um, see what tools they're using and how they work and what their what our respective workflows are. Uh, so I'd like to invite everybody to come to that path, and then we can possibly uh, discuss. Um, yeah, these yes. things. Maybe we should merge some of our scripts with the scripts used by the Perl team. Yeah. They have a lot of yeah. useful scripts too. Yes, yes. They do. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, Cedric says that build and upload might need some more documentation. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. Um, and then there's another thing. Um, I recently was made aware of Git build package patch queue, which is um, yeah a nice tool for managing uh, Debian patches. Um, I well I like it so far, and I propose that people that manage patches in our repo uh, would use that. Um, has anybody? I agree. Git build package pack, pack, patch queue is awesome. I use I use it already on some of the team packages, including Redmine and and uh, maybe others. I think Rails.
Okay, good. Um, so, um, then uh, an open item on, I guess, our team wish list is to actually know who's active in the team. Um, <laughs> well, you're here. <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, I, I think we have more than 200 uh, people in the Elioff team. Yep. And um, yeah, so uh, the other day I wrote a script that finds people in the team that did not touch <coughs> any file in the, on Elioff in the last two years. So that, um, yeah, um, and I think that <coughs> reports basically two thirds of the team. So um, I will go ahead and ping or send a mail to everybody that's on that list um, and ask them if they are still here, basically. Um, and then maybe we can reduce the list of members yeah, to see who's actually active and. You'll be removed from the team in one month if you don't say anything. Yeah, um, I'm. Yeah, so I gave that script to the Perl team, and they are doing that in the next few days for their team, um, and I'll steal their mail template once that's yeah. done. Um, yeah, if nobody disagrees, then let's do that. Um, yeah, we need a sprint next year, I guess. Um, uh, that too, that I guess. Too. But the sprint's probably going to be during the freeze. Because right. we had one in March this year, so mm -hmm. the, the similar time of the year next year is going to be freeze. Right. If everything is okay, we can do some Ruby 2.4 work, but otherwise it's probably going to be fixing stuff for the release. Yeah, um, does anybody want to warrant you for setting the sprint up or um, providing locations or anything? Um, I know Brazil was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and there are more people here now from, oh, okay, it's 50-50. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, uh, Cedric is asking on RC if it would be better to wait for the release, so I guess uh, wait for freeze to be over, but... Um, yeah, that depends on what we want to do. That might mean sprint in September or later. I don't know. You could do another sprint this uh, year. Mike, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you could do another sprint uh, this year. Like, um, to finish uh, all the work on the updating packages, that could make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so, to suggest Belgium or Austria, I'm not sure. Why Belgium? <laughs> um, yeah, we could try Austria um, if we do. Yeah, this year or, or again in February. Um, that will be as cold as in Paris, I guess. Um, yeah, so well, maybe Austria. <laughs> Maybe depending on what. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, why Belgium? <laughs> Let's see um, what Cedric says about Belgium. Um, good. Did I think he's probably going to mention Fosden. Huh? I, I think he's going to mention Fosden somehow. Okay. That's my gut feeling. Ah. <laughs> Okay. Beer. Yeah. Beer. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have anybody from Belgium? <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Um, then 
Yeah, so I think there are 15 minutes left. Um, the, there were some open points from last year that I'm not sure have been dealt with. Um, the first one is what to do about Rails asset packages, and I think we're going to have more and more of these. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anything came out of that discussion. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, there is a link. Could, can you yes. see what that says? Did I not read that? All right. So we came to the conclusion that the best way to maintain this package is to come to package separately the JavaScript library and the Ruby glue. So this is more or less what we are already doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah. I think that there's lots of things. Uh, if you if you take a ra random Rails assets package today, then it's very probable that the corresponding JavaScript package is already there. Mm -hmm. And then you just, I mean, just in quotes, you just need to maybe remove the embedded copies from the upstream tarball, and then sim link the the file. So I was uh, discussing yesterday with um, uh, Hector, which is a colleague of Andrew. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Indra is works for Collabora and they are kind of pushing for OBS. And he suggested that we could have a script that would deal automatically with the scene linking mm. of the of like pointing to the proper JavaScript package. That is kind of nice because we are right now doing that by hand and doing things by hand is always possible to break stuff and yeah. not do the right way. Okay, um, I guess this mail implies that the JavaScript package will be maintained by the JavaScript team and we will maintain just a simulant containing package? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, but then as long as we care about the actual contents of the JavaScript, then yeah. we also need to help <laughs> the JavaScript team. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Cedric notes that we'll have a 20 line Ruby package. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Right. Um, I mean, a every few months, one ITP that goes to David Devil will be restarting the discussion of very small packages and we will reach again the same conclusion as always. Okay. Um, so, and then, yeah. Um, there's an open item saying remove edge record and fast access, which we still need to carry on, unfortunately. Uh, I assume for at least another two releases, uh, except if you find somebody who is going to fix run, which is a documentation generator, which is used by a number of packages. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what to do about that. Uh, HPCOT has had security issues in the past and maybe there are still open issues, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and something that's not here on the list is I'm going to uh, remove blue cloth. Um, actually there are two reverse dependencies left for that. I have uploaded one of them and I'll fix the other one. And then blue cloth can also go, um, as far as I'm concerned, last upstream commit for blue cloth was 11 years ago or something, or eight, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that needs to go. And yeah, we have 10 minutes left. Maybe um, our Ubuntu contacts wants to say something. It's not I'm listening. <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah. 
Exactly. Uh, so Cedric says we could migrate upstream projects to another tool <laughs> than run for man pages, but I'm not sure that's uh, yeah. um, that's going to work. Um, yeah, there are uh, lots of non-Ruby packages uh, using that. So yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I think people should just use Pendoc, mm. or if they can, ask a doc or ask a doctor. Yeah. Okay. So and then yeah. there's the argument that Pandocs are relatively heavy build dependency. But then I tried installing it on a clean CH for the, the other day. Just it just Pandoc itself and two other libraries or something. So it's in my opinion, it's not big, should not be a big deal. Yeah, as long as you don't need to build Pandoc, I think it's fine. Uh, because building, as long as you don't actually build Pandoc itself, it's fine. Oh, yeah, because sure. Pandoc itself pulls in yeah, 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 yeah. everything. Um, yeah, Cedric notes some packages actually move to AskDoc. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Do you want to say something? I think I remove a wrong, a wrong dependency from everything that I write. So. Okay. Right. Um, anything else? Christian, I saw your email that is sent uh -huh. uh, earlier, and are you planning something about the Ruby package that are not maintained by the Ruby team? There's some action? Or? Hmm. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I think the packages that are maintained by other teams uh, should just continue to be maintained by them. Maybe we should find somebody from these teams and talk to them and say, okay, um, are you happy with our tools, I guess? Um, and then the other remaining packages, which are, I think, 10 or so, um, I guess we should have a look if they are actually working, uh, in which state they are, and um, yeah, so if, if they are not in a good state, then do something about it, whatever that is. That's related to the old package? Uh, yeah. Or to the leaf package or both? That, well, that's packages not maintained by the team. Right. That, that are Ruby packages. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, and uh, in the past we had, like there were quite a few Ruby packages not maintained by the team and then they did not actually work. Mm -hmm. And nobody cared about them. Okay. So yeah, we, we do at least a little bit better job than that. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess it goes together with everything. If they don't work, then we file RC bugs and let them be removed from the release. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Paula Sankar mentions that we yeah, really need to document our tools a bit more. Yes. Um, yeah. I think help is welcome on all of that. Uh, I hate to write documentation, honestly. Uh, yeah. Um, Michael? Matthias? <laughs> oh, Matthias. Do you want to say something about uh, Ubuntu? No? Okay, you are going to ship uh, 2.3 something. Well, the one. I'm going to drag you into a conversation no matter what. <laughs> well, the one thing I did uh, was to, to backport 2.3.1 uh, to the last LTS. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think, approved last week. Okay. So uh, we shipped with 2.3.0 and updated, um, well, exactly the Debian package okay, cool. to 2.3.1. So, and um, yeah, after that, I didn't touch Ruby. Okay. Uh, anymore. Right. Do you know if Redmine works at all in Ubuntu? Redmine, do you know if it works? Okay. I, I, I use it and uh, no problems. No problems? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so uh, on the Redmine IRC channel, uh, upstream channel, so sometimes people ask on about Ubuntu and I don't know what to say. But mm -hmm. if you say it works, it's, it's good. Okay, <coughs> then uh, if nobody has anything else, and I'm ignoring Cedric's 
not about the rule policy. <laughs> um, I'd say let's conclude the session. Thank you for coming. Um, Thank you, everyone. Then see you at a sprint or maybe next year. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>